uh, I'm never quite sure when the cut-off date for Happy New Year is, but I'm just going to extend it a bit. So just wish everyone a, a Happy New Year. So uh, thank you for your for your time. Um, so let me just um, let's get rid of. So um, just very very quickly. So the Digital Northampton podcast that that Richard mentioned um, started. The first one went out at the end of September last year, um, and, and prior to that. Um, I was doing something for the Digital Northampton, uh, doing it within live radio. Um, but for one reason or another, we decided to move over to a, to a podcast version. So Digital Northampton podcast, it's it's hosted on Podbean. I'll, I'll come on to that because at, at, uh, that's relevant. I'll come on to that later on in the presentation. Um, and you can access it in, in all, all of the main places uh, where people mainly listen to podcasts. So um, on Spotify and Apple, it uh, used to be on iTunes, they call them. Apple Podcast now and and on Google as well, so that's that's where they can be accessed. Um, and then um, I do something. I do a lot of communications and marketing, particularly with higher education. And I've started a a, a second one called Distinction on that, but that's just a, sort of a reference. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to pick up on the why, and I think that's always important. Um, just to think why 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 do anything? We're all we're all busy. We all have lots of things we need to do. So I think the why question is always a really important one. Um, I'm going to give a few sort of reasons why I think uh, podcasting is important and relevant and that's the here's why bit and then I'm going to go through the process and just to as as we've only got well less than an hour because I want to leave time for questions but um, I'm going to go through um, the process and I'm I'm talking in the way that people talk about making film because it's just really helpful for sort of film and tv you talk about pre-production production post-production and then this dissemination and promotion as well. I'm not doing very much on promotion because that that's probably an area that we need least help on. Uh, but I'll, I'm going to touch on it just to um, just because it would you know be remiss if that wasn't in there. So um, what I'm going to do is that so it's comprehensive in this that we're going to cover all the ground, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail in each area. There's there's more um, investigation that you could do yourself, or you can contact me separately to this that I could go into. Um, so let's, let's start with with why and these it's not an exhaustive list but um, this these are some of the reasons why marketing raising awareness creating engagement community building sharing a particular message connecting with people uh, demonstrating innovation and, and everyone else is doing it and everyone else is doing it is, is either a good or a bad reason to do it so if if um, if your competition or, or people who do what you do are using podcasts and then they're and they're doing it successfully and doing it effectively then there's obviously you know they, they, they have an advantage on you so that's a good reason just because everyone else is doing it isn't necessarily a good reason so i think it's, it's just to be clear what they can and can't do um and just just touching on format as well so um a lot of podcasting you hear is is uh so-called episodic which means you know you've got various episodes and they go on and on and a lot of them are based on sort of a talk radio approach two people usually talking about a particular subject um, but they they don't necessarily have to go on and on they can be time bound um, and and they're, they're really flexible and I think we we're just at the really early stages of understanding how they can be used and, and some of the client work that I've done and um, I'll, if I get a chance I'll talk a bit about that what I'm what I'm doing is not actually traditional quotes podcasting but it's using audio in, in a new way to support their communications. So always really important with any communications and marketing activity, who do you want to reach? This, this sounds really, really obvious stuff, but you, it's really important to be specific about who do you want to reach? Um, and that can, that can be the audience, but it could also be the guests that you're going to have on um, or, the, or the subject areas you're going to cover where are they that's important where are they that may be a geographic thing it may be the sector where they work it may be their type of role um, or it could be a demographic um, thing um, so so just be be clear about who they are um, and then what are they interested in and again this is sort of a lot of the sort of marketing communications 101 about just know your audience what are they interested in and, and what do they want to know because that's obviously an important um, determining factor on the on the content that you're going to create is anyone going to be interested or are your target audience going to be interested um, and then just be clear about how you want them to respond and this is just a basic do you want them to think something feel something or do something so just just moving on to the the why 
Um, the, the, when you look at the statistics of um, media research organizations and Nielsen, particularly big in the US and Statista as well, who, uh, who produce some really good reports and, and often do infographics of other people's reports, just talk about podcasts being one of you know, the fastest growing communications vehicles. Now, partly that's because anything new is always the fastest growing in percentage terms. Um, but, but looking at the year on year number, um, things, things are growing. In, in the UK, Ofcom stats, um, they, they do various annual reports. If you want to, if you want to have a definitive knowledge of um, about media, consumer behavior, etc, etc. Um, Ofcom, and the most recent thing that they've produced was in 2019, and here's a quote from the Media Nations report. So it wasn't entirely about podcasting, but it talked about that. And that was so a couple of years ago, um, 7.1 million people in the UK now listen to podcasts each week. I would hazard a guess. I know that they're going up, the trends are going up, but I would hazard a guess because of because of lockdown and people working remotely that, that, that that's gone up, sort of, if not exponentially, but it's gone up significantly. In summary then, to to... Nielsen stats to Ofcom and Statista say more cod podcasts are being listened to by more people more often. Um, it's really, I think it's really lit. And I've just sort of touched on on lockdown, but but because of of how people can consume content, um, it, it's something you can create remotely. You don't actually have to go and see people face to face, um, so you can create and engage remotely. So it's it's a really yeah, good way of producing something and, and engaging with an audience but you can do it you know under current circumstances um, and for in communications terms it's referred to as your owned content so there's sort of three ways that, uh, that um, PR or communications content is referred to there's either paid which is when you buy advertising space earned is when someone a media outlet reports on you and what you do so you've earned um, that space it could also be in social media as well and owned is the things that you produce it could be from your website your social media spaces so it falls into the owned space um, and uh, with all digital comms and marketing it's really important to be aware of something called the long tail the long tail effect i'm going to write an article about this in a couple of weeks on on linkedin so um if anyone follows me, they'll just I'll, I'll put that there because this is I think this is particularly important when you're thinking about podcasting, um, and it, we used to sort of refer to um, the, the long tail effect in broadcasting means you're trying to read a, reach a broad range of people. So traditionally, TV, radio in the past, pre-web, you'd be talking about broadcasting. You're trying to get to as many people as possible. Um, with online, narrow casting was a phrase that started to emerge. You don't hear it quite so much at the moment, but I think it's really important to bear that in mind. So if you're not aware of the long tail effect, I'm going to talk a little bit about that because it's an important principle to be aware of. Um, but just to think about narrow casting, because with a lot of the most popular podcasts, there'll probably be quite well-known media personalities already, um, and they're reaching quite a large number of people. My recommendation is that you're not necessarily chasing numbers, and that's why you know thinking about the audience is really important it's actually being very precise and specific about them so so really quickly on on the long tail so the long tail um is something um that that shows how web and digital has changed how how people um c consume products and services and, and i'm going to give two examples here so if we look at this graph here um if we if pre-web if you think about music like consuming music um, the the popularity piece uh, th that's called the head of the tail uh, if you wanted to buy music pre-web you you had very limited opportunity to hear new music and you had limited opportunity to buy new music so the if you wanted to hear um, music you had to listen to radio um, so therefore you didn't have the opportunity to browse in the way that you do today um, and when you went to buy something you had to go to a, a particular specific retail outlet and that retail outlet had very limited shelf space so that the, their stock list would be very much based on things that were going to sell um, as opposed to we want to just um, provide everything that's available so what it meant was that sort of pre-web um, taking music as an example it was that you the majority of um or nearly everything that was sold was sort of in this what they call the hits 
area. So it was buying uh, lots and lots of products over a very narrow range. And then if you think about what happened, first of all, with Amazon, but then also with, with Spotify um, in post web, suddenly lots more products became available because they were stored electronically. There was no physical limitations in the same way there was with retail and shelf space. So lots more products became available. So um, the, the long tail basically talks about there's lots of niche items, niche products um, that were just weren't viable to sell or distribute um, pre-web, but now are available. And the, the same could be said here. So if we think about how does this apply to say radio and podcasting? So the hits, the popularity bit there, that would, you'd be referring there to things that, um, the, say the BBC do for instance so Five Live would have the majority of people would be listening to to Five Live compared to individual podcasts but but what it does mean is and without getting into all, all, all the details of it what it does mean is if you're thinking about the long tail don't worry about how many people you're reaching think about um, the product or in this case the, the, the podcast the service you're providing um, make sure it's really specific for your for your niche audience so don't worry about chasing um you, your the, the numbers think really clearly about um who the audience is I'm, as i say i'm going to write an article on this and go into more depth because i think that, that this is a fundamental for all digital and i still think it's very it's, it's not really understood particularly well and i think sometimes we try and chase audience numbers and we don't think about actually we can get we can be really specific to this particular audience with this particular piece of content. And I think that's a really good guiding principle when it comes to podcasting. Um, very quickly, it's really, podcasting is really good because you've got a subscription model so people can start to, to follow you. And if they subscribe um, every time you put out a new episode, um, it, yeah, it's important to promote it. But if they're subscribing, then um, they will automatically see the new episode come up in their feed. You don't have to worry about GDPR. It's very much an opt-in basis. so that's that's a good way of, of creating that sort of sticky engagement it's very very shareable it's very easy to share on social media so if, if someone likes either the series of podcasts or a particular episode it's very easy for them to share um, and you've literally i would share the tone of voice we talk about tone of voice and communications and marketing how you know partic particularly through written content so how do we get the tone of voice right well you're literally your tone of voice you can be the one speaking or you can employ people to speak on your behalf and you can create a, a literal tone of voice um and and why i put authentic there as well what, what i've heard from a number of people is that um particularly say um in the commercial context people are saying well what i tend to find is that when i get in front of people and talk to them i you know my conversion rate is quite high but it's uh, you know people don't necessarily know who i am or um, i haven't really had an opportunity to get in there and talk to them this is a really good way of you um sharing who you are people having, having you know been able to listen to you as well um very flexible so you can listen on the go um so whatever you're doing walking the dog washing up driving walking podcasting is one of those things that's um it, it, it's easy it's easy to listen to and engage with and again um whether it's for profit not for profit for for education if you compare this i think sometimes the decisions people are making are shall i do this podcast or shall i do a piece of video and and it's certainly a lot more flexible in terms of listening than than video and i'm not i'm not um i'm not saying video doesn't have its place i do think if the budget isn't there for video though i think audio is actually superior to video and um partly and i've said this is the next bullet point partly it's to do with the power of the imagination so for instance if you're talking about a particular um thing and i'm going to do a really sort of it might seem a really banal example but let's say you're 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 doing you want to do you know peace on health and safety people working at home sitting at their desk do they have the right chair do they have the right equipment um, now if you show a video of that first of all it's a difficult thing to set up but invariably the person that you're filming on the video and the context in which they're working the home environment or whatever if you're trying to demonstrate this health and safety piece it it's it's not it's very hard to relate that to all the people um who you want to 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 listen and engage with it because it's not them it's not their work environment it's not their desk it's not their chair if you do it by audio and you start describing it their their imagination automatically starts to think about oh that my desk my space my computer my chair so it's a very it's um that sort of power of the imagination and that that personal and power of the imagination thing i think linked together actually those two bullet points 
people interpret the the information really personally and i'm going to give darren as an example now so um uh, as richard said at the start darren sharp from ssa digital we podcast has gone out this week so if, if darren was talking to someone about you have a vacancy in your team that you need to fill automatic anyone who's listening to that is, that's um that it's relevant they're automatic thinking about their business and their vacancy so the, the by using audio actually by taking away visual signals and video you actually start to make things a lot more um personal and a lot more relevant what you're saying is extremely relevant to the person who's who's consuming and listening to that the power of the imagination thing also works and i'll come on to that as well at the edit stages that if you wanted to talk about i don't know let's say you're a not-for-profit and you wanted to talk about environmental issues uh, you wanted to give a sound of uh, airplanes flying or something like that it's very simple there are actually free sound effects available that you can put into a podcast of a jet taking off now to do that in video is really difficult um, it's also quite expensive to get hold of it takes quite a long time but by introducing sound and again this isn't sp specific to podcasts this is this is about audio and radio you're allowing you're enabling the power of the imagination to take over so you can actually you create some really sort of powerful imagery in people's minds um through podcasting as well and uh, and i i see that uh alan's also one from silver disc alan someone I've, I've interviewed a couple of times and the second one of his podcasts is going out in a couple of weeks time or two or three weeks time uh, so I, I just need to credit alan on this one so search engine optimization um if getting traffic to come through to your website you can embed the feed and i'll come on to that later on on your website so direct people to your website to listen uh to the podcast it's a, it's a really good way of getting traffic to your site um and it, it's it's const it's content that's constantly changing if you, as you produce new episodes as well so it's very good for search engine optimization and i'll come on to about the, the issue of the transcript as well um, so the process, start, starting with pre-production, planning, getting ready, and we've already touched on that a bit. Um, for each of these, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, but there are some things that are just I've, I've found really, really helpful. So again, going back to sort of radio and, and film and TV and, and how those things get produced and, and, and borrowing the principles there, there's something called a treatment. And if you just Google um, radio show treatment, um, that will give you some examples of what they are. But rather than writing an in-depth script, what I'd recommend is doing something called a treatment, which is just really giving yourself an opportunity to decide what the format of the podcast is going to be. Are you going to have two people, three people? Is it going to be a panel? Is it just going to be talk? Are you going to have sound effects? All, all of the things that I've, I've talked about earlier, about audience, what you're trying to achieve. Um, a treatment is is a summary um, and the treatment is often in, in film terms, um, if people are trying to get a film financed in, say, Hollywood or, or TV finance, what you do is you create a treatment and you take that round and that will become part of the pitch. So you don't have to go into a lots of detail with, with a script, for instance. So I'd really recommend using that approach, creating a treatment. Um, and it really helps, particularly if you have to communicate with other people in your organisation about what, what this podcast is going to be. A treatment is a really good summary there are sort of approaches and templates available online so i'd sort of recommend looking for those and so what i've done and um, from a website called pen and the pad.com they've got an example of a treatment for a radio show and it would be a really similar example that i'd recommend um, so so that's your starting point it, it doesn't even have to be more than than a single page but again i think what it does it starts to there's so many things to think about each one of them it's fairly straightforward but what a treatment does is just sort of get your get your ideas collected but without having to go into a ton of detail and think about writing the script because that, that that i think is a very difficult thing to do in a podcast um and then just get organized with um with with guests um i really strongly recommend creating something like a briefing sheet um, and i'll come on to that in a second as well and these are things that i've learned that are really important that First of all, you might feel nervous about doing the podcast, recording and, and such, but when you get used to it, and you will quite quickly, it's just to remember that, that guests are going to feel a bit, unless they've got a lot of experience, they're going to feel a bit sort of strange and uncertain about being recorded. And I think the whole thing is to put them at their ease as much as possible. And so this is something that I've learned is really helpful, is to create a briefing sheet so you can send it to them in advance. 
um, have all the information in there, but make it clear it's just a reference guide. You don't have to read it all like a book. It's just there are bits, the bits in there that you might want to know as a guest if you're being recorded. Um, make sure we do a pre-interview call. Don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but it's just, I think, helpful to have that conversation. Book the time. This is just a sort of the organisational admin stuff. Book the time, set a reminder. So what I try and do is I, I book the time with them, electronic um meeting invite and then set a reminder about a week in advance so contact them again just to check that they're fine um, and just to remind them and also um get the questions to them i'd either get the questions to them when you book it but sometimes you, you might be booking people months in advance so that week in advance email you can just remind them of the questions and say this is what we're going to run through so just really quickly on the briefing sheet i've just i've just sort of cut out the context list of the one that i've done for the digital northampton podcast and it does everything it's it's a longish one so it's got 10 pages on there but that's because i cover off a lot about what digital northampton is as well um but it's you know the podcast the, the format how it's recorded some advice on you know headphones etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, but that briefing sheet is really helpful it takes a bit of time to put together but once it's done it's very quick to send out because, and then if anybody um has an interest in the show you can you can send it to them and then they've got everything they need hopefully and that saves you a bit of time on that on that pre-interview call so that's on the, the planning getting ready so the recording itself is pretty easy actually you you could do it um face to face at the moment obviously we we can't um and you could use a studio um I don't think they're necessary, and I think that probably the majority of, uh, of podcasts probably aren't, aren't going to be done in that way, even sort of uh, post-pandemic, post-lockdown. Um, and you can use anything. You can use voice recorders. This is, you know, face-to-face, -face, mobile phone. So you can just set the app, the recording app, put it on the table. Um, you can do it from a laptop, both sit next to the laptop and just, just talk into it and record it. And there are other specific uh, apps available so there's an app i've not used it but i'm just sort of doing a little bit of research and there's an, a, an app called trint which uh, you can get from mobile phone the majority of it will be do be done remote remotely and to record on zoom is absolutely fine scope skype whatever um, and th these applications will record for you and so for instance richard's recording this um now don't worry too much about the the details there's a few things i'm going to talk about here that if you do get into some editing some of these things are just sort of basic principles that are good good to know if it does if these are meaningless to you don't worry about it it's not essential to know but um so with with zoom it's possible to record tracks separately and what that means is that if you're having a zoom call you can basically have two separate sound files so the one of you speaking and the one of the person you're talking to speaking and they come through as two separate files the default will set up to have it as one file um, but if you need to uh, edit that let's say that you or the other person has got certain bits of background noise you need to get try and get rid of if you separate those two things out it makes it um, more straightforward and it's possible to do that there's settings in zoom to do it, record the track separately and then the other thing, and this is something I've, I've actually learned as I've gone along, is to record locally as well. And what that means is that I, so what I do is I'll record on Zoom and I'll be recording the person at the other end. And I'll also record myself on the PC simultaneously. So basically there, there ends up being, I've got two sound files of myself, but the one of me being recorded locally just on my pc i'm not i don't have to worry about bandwidth or anything else like that it just means i get a nice clean recording and if possible if you can arrange it for the other person to record locally as well then send you the file afterwards then that really helps with the editing process as well but as i say don't worry too much about that that's getting sort of into the into a bit more sort of detail um, but the applications you've got quicktime is a, a recording application you can use on a on a mac and voice recorder on a, on a pc um, and, and I think that, you know, there's, there's a saying about, oh, we can always change it in post. And what that means is that if, if you're, if you're recording, something doesn't go quite right, don't worry about it. You can probably do some editing to fix it afterwards as well. Um, and, and again, this is just a, a sort of a, a small piece of advice. You don't necessarily have to do this. I've heard it done both ways, but, um, I, I just recommend recording, um, your introduction. So if you've got a basic introduction to the podcast itself, record that separately because then you can just use that repeatedly you don't have to keep remembering to do to do the introduction and then the outro piece which is the bit at the end 
thank you for listening this is where you can get the podcast please like and subscribe that type of thing um i just record those separately then it just saves you a lot of time every episode you just pop those in there you don't have to worry about uh thinking about those each time um and on recording just um make sure that the idea, these are ideal things so make sure you're in a room with soft furnishings books etc and actually when we're recording from home those things tend to be more uh, the case than when we're, we're working in an office um, as far as equipment goes as well as the recording equipment the I, headphones are really important um, actually I'd, I'd say if you had a choice of it's a false choice but basically if you had a choice between do you get a good microphone or do you get headphones I would say go for headphones every time and the reason for that is that um, if people are, are listening to you through just their their speakers there's a likelihood you'll get feedback on that or that will loop back and then you'll be re-recording that as well whereas headphones make sure that all sort of stays um so sort of that sound is is locked in um microphones if possible but um but but not essential uh, an inbuilt microphone will work and and then just for sound quality be as close to the microphone as possible without sort of touching it and sort of um if you think about um press conferences are actually a really good good example here press conferences are often in, in in hotel rooms or sort of rooms that are very echoey that don't have soft furnishings they've got um sort of straight hard surfaces where sound bounces back what the journalists will do you can see they're trying to get their the dict phones and phones and microphones as close to the person giving the press conference as possible and the reason for that is that that just um the shorter distance the sound has to travel between the the the, the person speaking and the microphone um, the less chance there is of distortion happening as well. Um, reduce background noise. Yeah, so in the summer, ask people if they can sort of shut windows and stuff like that and just make sure that you don't have kettles boiling and washing machines going off and all those sorts of things. Um, and I've said it before, but I'll just say it again, that separate tracks to ease editing, that's just a really important, um, important thing to do. Yeah, so really quickly on Zoom, if you need a bit of help how to record a Zoom meeting, they do have a help center that's really good and they'll go into all the details of, of how to record. And I would say probably the majority of people that I've heard talk about recording remotely use Zoom. Um, and then this um, is a, it's, it's just a voice recorder. It's the type of thing that journalists use. You've got the two microphones there pointing in different directions um, and it's just something that's got more flexibility of how you set sound, etc it's not essential a mobile phone will be fine but the just to make you aware that these sorts of things exist um and i think i missed it on the bullet point but um if all else fails and you just want to get that studio quality you can record something under a blanket or sit on the bed and have the quilt over you and it, it sounds really weird but uh, mark strong the actor has done all the voiceover for the government ads you might have heard ads about coronavirus either this one's taken from youtube i've heard about the adverts on podcasts on radio uh, and tv as well mark strong sounds like he's, he's he's in a studio he was actually he said i did that because I, I was on holiday when i did it i was sit, did that sitting on the bed with the quilt over my head so if you want to have a listen to that and get a sense of sound quality it sounds really weird um but if it's good enough for mark strong it's good enough for me if i if i, I don't have any a proper place to record and i need to get a good sound quality that, that's just a just a bit of a weird tip okay so the editing itself um th this is something you could spend a long time on and again i'm just going to make it introductory you've basically got two choices you've got to f you can find someone who do the editing for you if you've got someone in house who already knows brilliant um but there's a, a website called fiverr which is um a place where freelance creatives um basically make themselves available so if you think of any sort of creative work that a freelancer can do a site like fiverr is um is is you know is a really good way of finding people and finding how much they charge so you can go to fiverr um just search for audio editing you'll find lots of people there doing different types of audio editing um or you can use um a piece of software and this is the software i use and it's free it's called audacity and i've just done, I've done a screenshot of it there so you've got two options to it either in-house you can use audacity that other audio uh recording and editing software exists but this this is free um i suspect that the the sort of more professional versions do a lot more but i think for purposes of what you need to do for podcasting audacity is fine um just really quickly 
um again if this doesn't make a lot of sense don't worry too much about it but um these are these are different tracks this is what the tracks look like so this this is actually um a podcast i've done recently the track at the top is the intro if you're familiar with the with the podcast that's the bit where i have the background music and i do the standard intro about digital northampton what digital northampton is the second track down is the specific introduction that i do um, which i record after i've done the interview which i'd say this is what the interview is all about and then the the track you can see there the reason there's two is that's a stereo track um and that is the interview itself and that's got both myself and the person i'm talking to on there and then the track at the bottom is the what's called the outro and that's that's where i've got the music um and but you know, just saying thank you for listening on there as well and by the way the, the stereo track you've got there so the the one that's third the third one down uh, is i've already edited that so that was separate tracks then i exported it and brought it in there it's getting a bit technical don't worry if this this doesn't make um sense to you but um it it's helpful when i first started doing the editing about sort of nine or ten months ago i had, I had no frame of reference i'd done none at all uh, and then it was described to me as you know just think about it as a word document and how you would um edit a word document it's just helpful for me just to see what these things look like um so with editing you can you can outsource and you can either do get someone to do a full edit and just tell them what you need and you've done the recording get them to they can do everything they can source music etc um or it could just be tidying up and say actually i just want to get the the sound uh tidied up but if you can send it back to me i'll do the rest um just be really really clear on what you need and i think that's why the treatment's really helpful particularly if you're outsourcing the editing it just means you can give them a very precise way of doing it I'm sure there are good editors who, if you just say, I'm not really quite sure what I want, but um, you know, particularly say for the first podcast, you could talk to them and they could, they could help you out and say, well, actually I'd suggest this or maybe do some background there. So um, you, you might not need to do any editing uh, at all, but as, as with anything working with the creative, just be really clear about what you want, because the more you, you are manure, the more changes you want to make, you know, time is money. It will cost you more as well. Um, so, I'd recommend Audacity. There are a lot of, um, it, it's, it's created as an open source. So there's quite a big community around Audacity. So there are a lot of tutorials about getting started. The only one thing you need to be aware of is that there are different versions of Audacity. So just be clear that the video you're, work, you're looking at is, is about your version of Audacity. Otherwise it can be a bit confusing. There is an online manual community as well. So it's just really, really helpful. You need to do a bit of file conversion. You need to change it from when you do your recording, you, you probably need to change it. A lot of recording, I think the Zoom one, it sort of records it as a video file and you need to get that converted. But there are free, Samsar for instance, is something you can unload. You can upload files and get them converted to the right format so you can do the editing. Um, and again, this is quite technical. So again, don't worry too much about it. But if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do your own editing, you need to do something called normalizing it which is basically bring, bringing the volume pretty much bringing the volume to the to a similar level so if you so if one's sort of talking at the same volume um do something called noise reduction which is taking out background noise so for instance for me i always get a bit of hum off my computer um but what i do is i just i just leave i just record quote silence or just record for you know just a few seconds and what i can do is then sample that and say i want anything that sounds like that to be taken out so if there's any background noise that's really important to take out and then truncate silence what that means is quite often you we all do it we we pause and uh i'm not sure and then we might pause what truncate silence does is just automatically goes out and chops out all the silence and it's a really quick thing to do um and then producing in mono don't worry about stereo mono is absolutely fine so if that just seemed like gobbledygook, really don't worry about it it's not important but if you're going to start doing your own editing just highlighting about normalizing noise reduction and truncating silence is is important to know and really helpful um and then i mentioned about so you know like music intro and outro music or the theme music you're going to have or sound effects there's lots of royalty free and free um sound music available now royalty free isn't necessarily free royalty free just means that you don't have to pay ongoing royalties for it but you might have to pay for the track as a one-off but there are um, if you look at search under Creative Commons um, and there are websites like Freesound where people update, upload um, 
sample tracks of music and it's people just you know making it available and just be just be clear what the license agreement is so there are lots there's lots of uh, music available um, so you don't have to um, worry about getting something commissioned um, and then sound effects uh, I talked earlier about if you wanted to get the sound of a jet engine or something the BBC relatively recently made quite a lot of sound effects um, available so sound files available so if you want to download and have have some sound effects um, the BBC is a good place to start but it, you can also search under Creative Commons as well so for all those other things that's uh, referred to as sound design there are lots of free things available as well um, and then when it comes to voiceover going back to um, Fiverr for instance you can um, you can get lots of mainly mostly actors um, voiceover artists available in all sorts of accents and voices and genders and etc et so lots of whatever you need um, you may decide that you want to be a producer of the podcast you don't actually want to do any of the talking in which case you can uh, hire people to do that as well so dissemination i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this but i think this is this is obviously crucial technically to be a podcast it needs to be available um, and disseminated probably the easiest thing to do there is there are several um several podcast hosts available you could could just google it and th this um this page has got some, some ads if you scroll down you can see the see the organic uh, results as well um but if you look into something like podcast insights there are some they do reviews and there are lots of different hosts available I, i'd imagine over time th this will these will be reduced as as it tends to be the case with these things but it, it very much depends on what, you, what your budget is and what you're trying to achieve and are you trying to monetize it? Do you want to get um, you know, advertising re revenue coming in? Uh, and I think for the majority of people won't really be doing the, the, the numbers to sort of make that, that worthwhile. Um, but I would, there, there, are, there are several sites like Podcast Insights that do reviews of um, podcast hosting services and it's just worth having a look at that and just working out from yourself which one you think might work for you and a number of them so this one here reviews 31 of the best sites and it's saying here seven have free offers so there's a number of them that you can start out with and you don't have to pay um, for the for the hosting services you won't get you won't get all of the things available all the services available you'll get the key things mainly the syndication bit which i'll come on to um, tends to be something like analytics is quite limited um, on the free versions but to be honest analytics isn't a particularly strong thing that these these, these people um, provide anyway but I'll come on to that so why why is it important to use a, a host um, save space on your web server so uh, if you've got a number of audio files they, they are quite large um, and then you've got you've got you know bandwidth issues and, and hosting issues and such so you know just don't have them on your own web server would be my recommendation but the key thing is the dissemination um, so once you post onto um, onto your host then it will just say you know it'll, it'll ask you which where do you want to uh, send it out to and you know I'd say you know Spotify iTunes Google other other key ones you, you're gonna get the vast vast majority of people through those and you can disseminate uh, from that really it's very straightforward very easy um, they've got step-by-step -step processes in there as well and there are analytics and it is important to understand how many people have downloaded the files and listened uh, or listened to them separately so they might listen to them uh, as a stream or they might download it onto their phone let's say you will get some analytics on this um, it's not perfect but um, you would you certainly get a sense relatively of how well uh, you do it it also provides show notes and show notes i'm going to come on to um <clears throat> show notes i'll come on to but show notes are basically the notes of you know just a description of what that particular episode's about and if you're if you're talking about something um so for instance show notes could have links uh could you know the person you're interviewing could be a, a link to their linkedin profile it could be a link to their website um but if let's say something comes up in conversation some that someone references oh this book was really important to me you can put that in there as well so show notes are basically all those sorts of uh, value added <clears throat> just really quickly on the dissemination um the on um a host like acast acast tends to cost a bit more it tends to be used a bit more sort of professionally 
Um, but ACOS has got this really nice tool. And sometimes you see these on, on say LinkedIn where people have, uh, have the sound waves moving, just a very short snippet from the interview or from the podcast and the sound waves are moving. It's, it's sort of nice, it's interactive, it looks like a little video and it's more likely to get sort of engagement as, as that. Um, so ACAST has that, um, has that built in. I've not really played with it very much because um, I won't go into all the detail now. It doesn't work. You need to get, it needs a bit of work to make it work properly. Um, so I think I will use this. I, tend, I use um, Podbean to host for Digital Northampton. And just as an experiment, I'm using ACAST for the other podcast just to do a compare and contrast. And this is something that's really... I think quite nice, but it doesn't work as well as it as it should. Um, but that tool, if you've ever seen that on LinkedIn, that tool um, is available in Acast. Okay, and transcriptions um, are really important as well. And again, this is I'm going to refer to the sort of uh, to the conversation that I had with Alan at Silverdesk as as well. To be able to, you can upload an audio file um, and get a transcription. I basically get a written version of the of the of everything that's said in the interview. Um, and if you you could take that just as it is and you can put it onto your website and it's then that's good for search engine optimization because all the sort of the things you're talking about you've actually got them as words on the page so so uh, search engines google can can see those those actual words my experience is they're a bit hit and miss um but this one descript someone just sent me a link to this just pre-christmas so i need to have a play with this but from what i can see it does a really really good job um of actually doing a very um yeah a very it, it, it transcribes really really accurately so i'd recommend that so if you want to create a transcription and this helps for subtitles or it might help for you know you you've done uh, you might be doing a podcast at a live event for instance and that's something in future um, and you might be speaking to somebody and other people might want to sort of have a look at that afterwards the transcription is something that you can get created automatically as well and then um so so what i do so the, the screenshot on the left here is podbean that's what the, the digital northampton podcast looks like on podbean and you can see all of the all of the episodes are on there but i also put them on my opinion website um i've got a, an area for podcasts and articles so basically whenever i um whenever i share something on social media i put the link through i used to put it through to podbean but now i put it through to the website um, and that's just a, an example of what it looks like. So you can on Podbean they give you some code um, for, um, for for streaming it, and then this little player can come up. So you put the code onto your site, and then this little player comes up, so people can listen to it um, just off your site, which is which is a good way of driving traffic. So just onto the show notes, um, that th this is an example. Um, I do so with Hannah Brady from the Brady Creative and Steve Walsh from Jump Media. We do something called Caught My Eye, which is something we, we're doing monthly now, which is something that caught our eye about marketing or communications. Um, and so what we do here is whatever we, we talk about. So I do the links and there's a link to Hannah and, and her business and Steve and his business. And then um, we, we talked about invariably Burger King comes up, but um, whatever we talk about specifically, so in this case, Burger King tweeting, <clears throat> um, we can put links through to that. Hannah mentioned something that Chelsea were doing um, and then I, there's a, a new app for supporters called a fifth stand. So a link to that as well. And then I picked up on something to do with social media and put a link through there. Um, and so what I tend to do is have a description of what the episode is, have the links to anything relevant that comes up. Um, and then I do common links for every episode. And on that, because it's for digital Northampton, I've got Twitter, LinkedIn, and then the Eventbrite link as well. Um, so if people want to see what's going on <clears throat> and then I've always excuse me um, <clears throat> I always have um, just a, a link to myself and, and to, to the company as well and, and something that um, that I'm doing over a period of time is that um, when when we might reference another podcast in the podcast as it were so what I do there is this one we spoke about search engine, search engine optimization and so what I've done here is put a link back to the previous podcast as well with Alan um, at Silverdisc, who I've mentioned a couple of times. Um, so, so that's really helpful. And this is a way actually in which podcasting is, is more powerful even than the radio, because what, I, what I'm tending to do with all, whenever I speak to somebody for the first time, I spend a bit of time talking about them, their background and their career journey, et cetera. 
and then if I talk to them about the subject in the subject or their, their area of expertise in future I'm not going to get into that detail again I'm just going to simply link back and just say if you want to find out about this person and their journey how they set the business up etc I can put the link in the show notes so the, so that's really important oftentimes you get to this point and you think oh I just want to get the thing out there it's really important just to sort of concentrate on this because the show notes also um and this is just what they look like they don't look necessarily great on um when they go out on say on spotify and whatever but you can use them yourself on your own website and you can certainly use them as the basis for for social media and as i said at the start i'm not going to spend a lot of time on promotion but but um just just highlighting a couple of the things that i do so on on twitter i've got my pinned tweet for the podcast and i've basically just shown people where they can access it where they can subscribe to it so um that's everything from i think the top one might be podbean um but then apple podcast spotify and then um, an rss feed there as well if people want to use those um and then i just use the opinion account my business account to to basically put a, a summary of the show notes in there and then i link through to my website and then uh, as linkedin prefers to sort of see activity from individuals rather than companies or organizations i then share it as me um, and then put a bit more information in there as well so effectively if you get those show notes right that takes a lot of the pain out of oh now what do i write for social media um and just finally just a recommendation so we've got some time for questions so, but finally just just relax with this is that it seems like there's a lot to take on board but just relax have fun i mean you know just there's, there's nothing that says you have to make it into a podcast if you want to just experiment and get used to hearing your voice because i think that's a really big part of it as well um and then just uh, just you know try conversation just try interviewing sort of colleagues or whatever just sort of testing it out um just do a five or ten minute things have have some fun um the advice i think for people say you want to get into to writing the advice is to read as much as possible and i just sort of think that that principle really applies here as well so listen to as many podcasts and, and radio shows as as you can and and do it do it for pleasure find stuff that you're really interested in just search on it i, I guarantee you whatever you're interested in however um however niche it may be there will be a podcast out there at least one episode that, of, of our podcast that that will be um of your area of interest listen for pleasure listen for information and then sort of work out how you're using it perhaps even professionally thinking oh, okay that's that's really helpful um and then also start to listen critically as well and for it, i would recommend the guardian have, have got a, won a podcast award um and just listen to the sound design that they do the way they use music behind what mood that elicit all those so think critically about what am i thinking now what are they doing how are they doing this how did they transition why is that music being used there so so i, th I find that really helpful that and it sort of starts to affect how you think about sort of editing or briefing someone else to edit as well but just give yourself a break learn and improve you don't have to be perfect and that's, that's phrase don't let perfect be the enemy of good um, I think it really applies here because it's just really easy just to feel nervous and think, oh, I'm going to be out there and going to make mistakes. It might happen, but, you know, just give yourself a break. You can always Im improve as you go along. And the thing is, you're not doing it live. You've got the process to edit. So those are just my sort of and finalies. So I'll just hand back to you now, Richard. Yeah, it's great, Ken. Really interesting there. Some good learning points. Um, any questions people have got, please do put into the chat. There's a couple in there already that I'll come to shortly. I think just listening to the Digital Northampton podcast, Ken, the sound effects, the sound design there really do add a lot to it, don't they? They add a lot to the professionalism. And I've started calling you Ben Burt from Star Wars. He did the sound design for that, but it does elevate it and lift it when you're listening to it. Yeah, and it depends. It's It's just... I, I tended to only do it on um, on the Court Meyer piece with with Stephen Hanna. I think that the, the the format or the feel of that lends itself a bit more. Um, and also, I try and take something that's the thing we're talking about. I'll try and take the sound of of the thing we're talking about. If someone references an advert, let's say, just get a bit a bit of that. So I don't I use it fairly sparingly. Mostly, it's just about using music as an intro and outro. But I'm going to do more to quotes documentary type approaches in future, and I think there'll be a lot more sound design as that but it's just um yeah just one step at a time was there any specific advice you had for people on like the length of a podcast do you vary the length or does it depend on the interview 
it does depend on the interview i'd I'd try to make it no longer than an hour um and it it depends there's some some work i've done with clients where we've actually we deliberately we've done a long medium and short version and even labeled them as that and because they were they were some of the ones i did they weren't sort of episodic they were um basically it was a university doing a bid for money and they wanted to sort of just do some interviews to, to to explain what the bid was all about what the research that they were bidding for was going to be about and we deliberately labeled them sort of like a long form very short form and a mid mid one as well so it really depends but i i think it doesn't <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily matter how long it is um as long as the, the stuff the, the content is compelling which might not be a very precise answer but um but but if people were going i would i would say anything between sort of you know 20 to to 35 minutes is 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 a good length because i think one of the one of the good things about the podcast in my opinion anyway is getting into a bit more detail about don't try and just get in get out give it a chance to breathe ask people where they're from and their backgrounds and if we are doing that authentic piece and we are doing you know doing something where people can hear us of a literal tone of voice give a bit of time and space to you know who are you where are you from just you know just be curious and I think people go with that and then that sort of flow leads you then into the to, to the subject itself so it, it does depend but um, I know there's one podcast there's a guy called Lex Fridman in Silicon Valley he does his about two or three hours which is a bit long for me but i think for the nature of what he's covering that probably works so there isn't really a, a guideline but i think it may just be about how much time someone's got available um, but you don't have to make it shorter isn't necessarily better yeah okay thanks very much you talked about in, as well interesting about not chasing hits and um and visits and thinking more about the audience do you do that when you're selecting your guests to talk to do you think about who the audience is going to be listening to this? What would they want to? Uh, what would they want to know? Yeah, very much. Um, and at the moment, what I'm trying to do. So I can only speak to the digital Northampton one at the moment. So that's I'm taking a very strategic view on that. So a lot of what I'm doing at the moment is introductory, and, and we've deliberately decided that some of it might actually not be sort of full on digital. Um, so for instance, I spoke to a personal trainer called Gareth Nelson. He's he's went out this week as well, um, and. Um, we only really talked a little bit about digital. It was more about what does he do as a personal trainer? And then it was like, well, how do you do it during lockdown? Um, but I think over, over a longer period of time, I think what, although, although we're sort of saying it's digital and it's about Northampton and Northampton Shear, that's still quite broad for the, for the audience. So um, I'm, I'm sort of just, partly it's to we just sort of trying to sort of spread spread the net wide but we're considering this to be sort of over you know several years worth of work and build up a portfolio over that period of time um so but i think for my other one for distinction i've just started that's going to be a lot more precise and i'm really conscious there about there's a certain audience i want to reach so i will be thinking very clearly about what what the guest is it will be there'll be sort of less leeway so again i don't know if i've really answered the question but um but what it, yeah don't don't chase big numbers don't you know if you don't get big numbers don't feel discouraged by that or if some some episodes don't get a, a, a lot of listens it's about the quality and it may be that the people listening to it you know it really it really matters to them um and i'll probably to be honest i'll probably reflect on it over over a year richard we'll look at it together and see just how things responded and we'll see you know you know, you don't want no one to listen to it clearly, but um, you don't need to just chase the numbers for the sake of it. You don't have to be another sort of five live. A question from Chanel. Um, she asked, is QuickTime and Voice Record a software? Is that the, uh, is that what you allows you to edit the podcast? No, that's just a recording. So the editing is, is something like Audacity, um, but, but just creating that sound file. Um, it's just QuickTime and Voice Recorder. They're both... Um, uh, yeah, they're, they're both the most readily available if people are recording from a Mac or from a PC. So technically, you could you could do a Zoom call. You wouldn't record the Zoom call. But if you're both recording yourselves, um, then those two sound files are what you bring into Audacity. There'll be two different tracks in Audacity, and you can move the tracks back and forward just to coordinate them. Um, the trick there is you can do a 
if you if you're both recording locally you do sing you both clap and you coordinate your clap you go one two three clap and then that spike of sound on that clap what you do is you bring those two together and that's the way you coordinate the tracks which is why in film they use something called a clapper board so basically that's how they coordinate the sound track and the and the video track is that so that's um but to answer the question though you use audacity to do the editing and the the, the recorder whether it's mobile phone or whatever that just gives you the sound file okay thanks for that some really good feedback in the chat just um appreciative of all the hints and tips there i know darren at stafford sharp associates they're like a tech recruitment company uh, they're looking to to create a podcast so i think he's just going to um, yeah he's just going to start it and, and give it a go mm. um, i think that's probably it then um for today kent thanks very much for your time hopefully everyone got um got something out of that we'll wrap up the recording and email that out to people um next week and we'll also post it onto our youtube channel and hopefully everyone signed up to our event bright and you'll get notifications of all future events we've got on january the 27th um, social media and mental health but a few people ask us to do something around that simon aston does a lot in schools talking to students around mental health on social media he's brilliant very passionate about it and he's putting together a kind of master class to, to help um, to help people with that and a really good one on january the 29th master class there around persuasive copywriting sue Keo, Keo from um, sue Keo, um, she's going to be delivering that and then we had one one person from her business talk last year around copywriting and they were brilliant so um really recommend that if you're into the writing game marketing that should be um that should be a really good one so that's um january 29th all our events are on digitalnorthampton.com so please do take a look there and, and book on they're all free uh, and like i say we'll be posting anything we uh, anything we do we record it and put it onto our youtube channel just search digital northampton or just that digi northampton on twitter so we'll end it there thanks very much for everyone signing up thanks again ken for, for taking the time to um put this together really good brilliant thanks very much everybody